Uh, hey guys, today we're uh, presenting our project of automation and construction. We have Dylan Pepin, Mike Royer, and we have Nick, Nick behind the camera. So we're going to start off with our first slide. So, uh, so we kind of jumbled up over there. So I guess yeah, we can we can just we can <laughs> literally just cut this part out. Yeah. So whenever you're ready, just. So the first first step was to identify current challenges in the construction industry. Uh, first one that we identified was the increasing shortage of labor that exists in the industry. Uh, there's less of an availability of tradesman labor to, to do the work. Uh, and this low availability is resulting in the need to pay, to pay higher wages so you know, the, the labor costs more. This is just due to, you know, ba to basic supply and demand principles. There's fewer people to do the work, so the cost of that work is going to go up. Uh, and the, the, the cause of this is more and more people these days are pursuing college degrees and like alternate career paths. Uh, in the current market, there's much more of a competition for high paying, high, co high competition jobs. And, just real, and for most of these, having a college, degre having a college degree is a must. Uh, you can't get these jobs if you don't have that, which is leading many more people to, to pursue that, that extra education. And this creates, this, this has a tendency to create a workforce who might be overqualified to do uh, what could be seen as, as simple tradesman uh, tasks in, in a construction setting. So the, the next challenge that we identified were safety concerns in the industry. Uh, in any construction task, there is going to be times when workers need to enter hazardous, hazardous areas to complete the work. Uh, there's often going to be a lot of paperwork associated with this any time that you need to be working in a hazardous area or a confined space. And this is something that many workers are going to try to avoid if they can. They don't want to be doing paperwork, you know, filling out all kinds of paperwork while they're on the job, so they might try to skip past that if they can. This, this is going to create liabilities in the event that something were to happen. Another safety concern that we identified uh, was, the in, was the increased duration of time that is needed to complete tasks if they're being done in a hazardous environment. Uh, when working in any sort of a dangerous area, obviously extra caution needs to be taken uh, to make sure that the work gets done right without any injuries. So this results in an increased duration required to complete that task, which is less than ideal when you're trying to complete a project in as short of a duration as possible. Another challenge that we identified is there's certain tasks that are going to drive up the cost of construction. Uh, an example of this is, is the services of a survey crew. Surveying a site is a very crucial part of the construction, ta of the construction process and it's something that's very time consuming. It takes, all, it takes a lot of care and it's going gonna, it's gonna to be very expensive because like, just because of the duration of time that it takes, survey crews tend to be very expensive. Uh, another, another example of something that's going to drive up the cost is equipment operators. Uh, due to the fact that the operators just right off the bat hold a position that has more liability and they have the, like, lots of certifications and trainings they need to go through and maintain in order to, to do their job, this is going to result in needing to pay them higher wages just right off the bat to do their job, so that's going to also drive up the, the overall cost of the project. One last challenge that we identified is the is communication difficulties in the industry. Uh, oftentimes, there there can be a lot there can be challenges uh, between construction managers and workers or the subcontractors just getting conveying the, the right information, communicating properly. Uh, if it's a very large site, if, and if there's no direct means of communication, it might be hard to get a hold of, their, of your workers. If they're in the middle of something, they're probably not going to be answering their phone or, and whatnot. So if you're trying to convey an important piece of information, it might be hard to get a hold of them and inform them of that. And then, so then having to, having to physically travel to their location, find wherever they are on site, and share this piece of information with them is going to be inconvenient, time consuming, and there's just, there could be many simpler ways to deal with that. So I'll be talking about the industry opportunities and ideas. Uh, the first point I'll be going over is drones um, for surveying. Currently uh, in construction, the method for taking a site survey is uh, a two-man crew going out with a total station and tripods, um, setting um, a multitude of control points and setting up the total station and disassembling it at each uh, control point, which takes a very long time to get all these points. Then once they have all these points, it's usually put into a computer software where a topographic map and the elevations um, are determined. This is very time consuming um, compared to a drone and you also are paying two laborers versus paying one uh, to operate a drone, which could do the survey in uh, about a quarter of the time. 
and it's also much more accurate because the drone is pretty much the computer the entire time. Whereas with Total Station, there's human error in setting up it. Uh, it's a very precise machine which needs to be calibrated correctly. And if it's not, there's uh, a large um, area for human error which just results in even more uh, uh, cost from time and from errors. And as you can see here um, in this picture, a uh, normal uh, survey is one to two days to go take all the points. Um, and then the data collection and processing the data can take one to two weeks, whereas it, it takes a day or two um, for the drone to do this. Then to get a PDF of the actual contour map and the topographic map, it takes one to two weeks. And whereas again, you see with the drone, it's only taking one to two days. And these are, we're talking about eight hour days with also an extra person too. And this is an absolute uh, cost saving um, method. And as you see the total time, it's two to three weeks for a two person crew. And just with a drone with one person, it's one to four days. And again, it's also much more accurate too. Uh, the next point I'll go over is equipment automation. Um, on every major job site, you'll see heavy earth moving machinery uh, to set up the site work. Um, and this is done by uh, professional operators. Uh, these people are, not only are they getting paid very well, currently there's a shortage of them in the industry since, uh, like Mike talked about, since most of, uh, most of the youth is going into college, there's less and less of these professionals out there so they can demand higher and higher wages. Not only can they demand higher wages, it's also an issue to find the qualified workers. So now you're putting up with possible like uh, lower quality workmanship and that's just gonna drive up the cost because you're gonna have to redo it. Uh, whereas if it's being done with uh, drones, as you can see here in the top right picture, uh, we have uh, automated like equipment as in bulldozers and loaders. And what they do is they take data from a drone, which takes the site service and they understand how much they need to grade the site down and they can be working around the clock instead of just working from a normal you know seven to four or nine to five job they can be going overtime without having to be paid overtime besides the one person working it it's much more accurate because again there's no more human error and it's much more efficient so you're completing your job uh, faster which is saving you time money it's a bit a higher quality of work which is also saving you time because there's no more um, errors and I'll hand it over to Phil. All right, the first opportunity I'm gonna talk about today is drones for communication. Like Mike already talked about, communication is huge in construction. Uh, there's some flaws in it. So the first thing I'm gonna go over is, uh, you know, the big problem on job sites is that people are busy, they don't answer their phone, right? Uh, and, and that's, it's not their fault, it's just how it is. You know what I mean? Uh, sometimes it's very critical where some of the managers need to be answering their phone and it's not happening and that can cause a lot of issues. Another thing is that, uh, you know, managers would actually save a lot of time and money if they didn't have to go track these people down because they're not answering their phone, right? So one of the solutions we have here is drones for communication. You can see in this picture, the drone here is going up to the guy. He's not flying the drone, another person is. So what's happening there is that drone is communicating to the guy from another person, but the person isn't there. So the guy in the office, looking through the drone, gets to see what's going on, gets to communicate to the person without having to go out there and talk to them. Saves a lot of time and energy, it's more, it's more efficient, and it's just a really good job site practice that can be used in the future. Uh, again, like you don't have to go hunting down people, and, uh, and, and the biggest thing is in, when, in the, when you're in those critical situations and you really need to be able to talk to those other people, you have that ability. And, and that's where this uh, drones for communication really Another big thing, and this is sort of far out, is drones for tangible tasks. Um, you know, obviously, for this to happen, you're gonna need larger capacities and payloads for the drones, because when using drones for surveying or communication, they're not, they're just flying themselves, it's easy. They either have a camera or whatever. When they're actually picking things up or doing work, you know, it, it's more involved. But, you know, from this you can see that, uh, you know, there's, there's two issues that we see on job sites. The first one is that, some tasks are, they're far reach tasks. So say that someone left their tape measure on top of the building, or say you have to go you know, tie a knot somewhere, or some little task, you have to go paint a beam up there, like you know, it might take a worker two hours to get to the top and they gotta prepare, where a drone could fly up there and do it in, in, in 30 minutes, right? 
even less five minutes, and the work and the laborer can actually go and start on another task. Another thing is dangerous tasks, right? You know, like say you have to, you know, go and change a light bulb on top of a tower. That's an extremely dangerous task. Takes all day. The drone will go out there and change it in a couple minutes. You know what I mean? So you can really see the magnitude in which, you know, these drones can help out. Um, and you can see in this picture, you know, th th this is just kind of an idea. It's not really something that happens right now. But this drone is, is you know, doing some repairs on the top of a building. And this is where you can see from here, you know, in the future, if you use your imagination, what drones can be doing. You know what I mean? So uh, those are our four big opportunities with drones. Uh, thank you for your time. Enjoy.